Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all doing really, really well, enjoying the weekend. I hope it's sunny wherever you are. But many people have asked, or a few people have asked, why I haven't done a hardware or a low-level technical video in a while. And it has been a while, so this is a little overdue, but I'm happy to talk about this really cool technology, this really cool project called LLVM. So if you're interested in understanding what it is, it plays a big part in modern day tech, but we don't see it because it's a very low level thing, but it's very important, very pervasive. First, before we get deep into this video, there's a couple things that you have to baseline knowledge that you have to know first. I have four links in this video, and I think if you watch these in order, if you haven't seen any of these, these are my old videos, but you should watch these first before watching this video. So it's basics on how a CPU works, what's an instruction set architecture, what's a processor, what does that mean, and also a high level overview that I give about how computers work. So if you haven't seen those videos, watch them first and you'll get a lot more out of this video. So do that and let's start. So first we need a very, very high level abstract working knowledge of what LLVM is. And there's a simple sentence which captures it. LLVM is a collection of compiler and tool chain technologies. We're going to talk about what exactly these two bolded words mean, compiler and tool change. But if you ever use GCC before, if you've ever written a little bit of C or a little bit of C++ in a class somewhere, you've used GCC. But LLVM does exactly what GCC does, but they're very, very different. So first, if you've never done GCC, let's just go through an abstraction in your minds really quickly. So what is a compiler? But First, don't overcomplicate what a compiler is. They're very, very complicated under the hood, but you have to keep somewhat of a high-level abstraction to just keep your head straight. Remember, always keep a high-level abstraction first before you dig into the details or else the details make zero sense. So all a compiler does is take your source code, does a bunch of stuff, and translates it into machine code. That's the only abstraction you have to remember. And remember that anything that needs to run on a CPU, anything that a processor runs has to be in machine code. A CPU doesn't understand for loops, while loops. They don't understand any of the code that we write. They have to understand machine instructions. And there's a ton, a ton of machine instructions. So I took this little snapshot from the GCC wiki page, but these are all the different arc instruction set architectures, all the different architectures that GCC supports and it's so many so i highlighted in red some of the really popular ones x86 powerpc arm you know arm is the instruction set popular for mobile devices like all our cell phones x86 is more popular in desktops but look at all these different architectures that we have to compile down for so this is what gcc supports pretty much what this is saying is that gcc can take your source code your c or c plus plus source code and they can compile it down to all these different machine instructions, which is pretty crazy. Okay, so now you're kind of aware of what a compiler does, what's the abstraction for a compiler, but the second part of this definition, LLVM is a collection of compiler and tool chain technologies. So what exactly is a tool chain? That's kind of a fancy word, but it's not really that fancy. So what is a tool chain? Honestly, it's just a fancy word for a bunch of tools, like no, no brainer, of course, it's just a bunch of tools, but more specifically, when you have a lot of steps together and each step builds upon the last step, we usually call this a tool chain. It's just a chain of steps and each one is dependent on the one before it. So for example, let's just take your average chain for a C program. Well, if you want to compile your C program all the way down to machine instructions, there's a chain of steps you have to follow. You have to pre-process all your source files, and then the compiler makes sure your source has no syntax mistakes. Then you assemble your files into object files. Then you link your object files into executable files. But you don't have to know the details of the chain. It's just the chain. And when we say something called tool chain, it's just a set of tools that does everything in that sequence. So. LLVM is a tool chain because it handles every single part of this process from source code all the way down to machine instructions. GCC does the exact same things, but even though they do the same things, they're extremely, extremely different. 
so they're different. Let's talk about how they're different because GCC and LLVM are probably the two most popular compiler tool chain technologies. So, so they're both compiler tool chains, but what makes them different? First, number one big difference we have to talk about is licensing. Okay, they're totally different in terms of licensing. If you're a company or you're a person and you want to make a lot of money, if you want to write cool new languages and you want to make a lot of money, you have to use LLVM. You can't do that with GCC because pretty much if you use GCC, everything you do, it's free. You can't sell it. So companies that want to write proprietary software, make money, they got to use LLVM and that's due to licensing terms. That's a topic for a different video, but that's a huge, huge difference. Second difference is more technical. The second big difference between LLVM and GCC is that LLVM is very modular when GCC is like a black box. So GCC is a black box. You really don't know what's going on inside. It's kind of monolithic. It's just this huge, super powerful thing. You just can't look inside and what it's doing. LLVM, on the other hand, is designed to be very, very modular. Different blocks, you can mix and match, plug and play, but there's like a front end, a middle, and a back end to LLVM, which we're gonna talk about, but you know, there's a lot of pieces to it. It's modular, it's not like a black box because you can take a peek at different parts of it. Secondly, LLVM is designed as an API, which just is it's a fancy word of saying, you can take a look inside what the compiler is actually doing and with GCC, you can't do this very easily. So here is like a very mental model picture of what LLVM is, but it's pretty cool. LLVM has a front end, this red part. It has a middle part that we're going to talk about and a back end, which I highlighted in yellow. All right, so the coolest part of LLVM, again, is that you can mix and match these different modules. And this is the cool stuff that enables Apple Swift to exist or Kotlin or like uh, Rust, but all these cool languages that people are creating, they're just mixing different parts of the tool chain. They're not creating this thing totally from scratch. So let's talk about each part of LLVM from the front, the middle, and the back. So the most important part, the most important part of LLVM is this middle part, the one that I call the middle, but this middle, it's, there's going to be a fancy word coming up, but this is called LLVM's Intermediate Representation. I'm going to abbreviate it by LLVM IR for short, just to say it a little faster, but this is the middle most important part of the whole tool chain. And you can think of this as LLVM's special, special language. It's not specific to any processor. We're not at the back end yet. It's just a very generic language for LLVM, and it's called LLVM IR. We'll talk more about that later. The front end, the front end, it's not JavaScript. I'm sorry, this is not JavaScript, but this, the LLVM front end is just taking your favorite languages, whether that's C, Fortran, or Haskell, it takes that, and the front end will translate those high level languages down into LLVM IR. So the front end just takes source code and moves it to the intermediate representation. Finally, the back end, the back end does what you're already expecting, but the back end takes the middle, it takes the LLVM IR and translates it down to architecture specific machine code. So that's x86, PowerPC, ARM. It takes that intermediate representation, a very general representation, and it translate that, translates that to very specific machine instructions. So I want to take a moment and talk a little bit more about this intermediate representation and why LLVM IR is so important. But originally, the history of LLVM, it used to stand for low-level virtual machine. And hopefully by now, you guys are getting a gist of why it's called a low-level virtual machine. But the project has grown so big that they say it's not an acronym anymore. It used to be an acronym, but on the website, they say, the name LLVM itself is not an acronym. It is the full name of the project. But originally, originally a long time ago, it used to stand for a low level virtual machine. So you should be getting the gist of why it's virtual. It's virtual because this LLVM IR, it's not specific to any different architecture. It's extremely, extremely generic. There's Remember, there's so many different ISAs for x86, for ARM, for all these different architectures, but this, it's not specific to any specific 
you know, ISA. It's just a very generic representation of our code. And let's take a look at what it looks like. But it's going to look pretty crazy. It's going to look like assembly. But remember, it's not any specific assembly. It's a very generic language. So this is a C source code file, some Fibonacci function. And this is what LLVM IR looks like. It looks very low level, but again, this is not assembly. This is a generic language that can be translated to different architectures. So this is C, this is LLVM IR. It looks pretty gnarly. It is pretty gnarly. You're not supposed to read it, but that's just, I'm showing you what it looks like. So if this whole virtual language is not clicking for you yet, I tried to think of another analogy. So if it's hard to understand right now, think of, a good analogy to think about is Java and Java bytecode because if you've written Java or know anything about Java, remember the holy grail, the holy premise of Java is that you write it once, you can run it everywhere, right? It's supposed to be very portable. You write Java, it compiles to this Java bytecode and you can write, you can run that bytecode on tons of different things. Well, that Java bytecode is analogous to LLVM IR. Bytecode itself is another generic representation of your code. It's not machine specific. It's just another virtual language. Bytecode is a virtual language just like LLVM IR is a virtual language. Okay, so that's an analogy. So remember with your bytecode, you use special Java runtimes, which are machine specific to execute the bytecode. So if you look at Java's runtime environment, you can see that all these different runtime environments, these are machine specific, right? They have Solaris, Spark over here, they have x86 over here, they have Mac versus Windows, but you have to get a specific runtime to execute the generic bytecode. So that's a good analogy if you're not familiar with LLVM, just compare it to Java bytecode. Okay, so to wrap up this video, let's take a concrete example. What if you wanna write your own compiled language because you're awesome, you just wanna write it? You also want to make a lot of money from your language because you want to sell it. You spent 10,000 hours on it, so you can't use GCC or else everything will be free. You also don't want to figure out how to compile your language to a million different architectures. You don't want to worry about having it work on x86 and PowerPC and ARM. It's too many details. You don't want to worry about that. All you want to worry about is your cool language features. So with LLVM, modular design, you can actually do this. So all you have to do with your cool new language is you have to create a front end for it. You have to create one of those blocks on the left side. Once you create a front end for your language, the front end will translate your cool source code down to LLVM IR. And once you do that, the rest of the tool chain takes over. Because once you have the intermediate representation, once you have the middle, the tool chain will take care of the back end for you. So all you have to worry about is making your source code as cool as possible or making your language as cool as possible. And that's really powerful because all of a sudden you've designed a language and that can be compiled down to all these different things like phones, desktop, servers, all these different things that you don't have to worry about. And as a more concrete example, we can take a look at Swift. So Swift is Apple's language, but I'm not gonna bore you with the documentations, but these are all the different steps for the Swift LLVM front end. So they have parsing, cool parsing, they have semantic analysis, warning, error checking, making sure Xcode works well. They have their own intermediate language. It's all boring stuff, but the most important part of the Swift tool chain is that the last step of their process is LLVM IR generation. The last part of all their stuff is to generate that middle and then the tool chain takes over. So pretty much what Apple did Swift is merely a front end to LLVM and then the tool chain takes over for everything. So Apple just made another box on here, the left for Swift, and then they use the rest of LLVM to get it to MacBooks, to iPhones, all the different stuff. They didn't worry about that. LLVM did that. So, all right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it pretty useful. LLVM is used by a ton of companies. I think every big company contributes to it. Every big company uses it. It's very, very under the hood, but it makes creating languages very, very cool. All you have to do to create a language is you just make a front end for it. You don't have to do the whole thing, worry about all the different architectures. You just make a front end, a cool syntax, and you pretty much have a language that works 
on tons of different architectures. So if you have any questions, please leave me a question. Please like, please like the video and see everybody next time.